Hi friends, I am back with a new video of lateral view of human brain. It's a very simple question that comes in exam. How to draw lateral view of human brain? It can come as a diagram for 3 marks or it can come as a question explain lateral view of brain with neat and label diagram. So what you need to do, this is the entire setup for lateral view of human brain. Now what you need to understand, we need to draw this brain. It's very easy to draw provided you follow those simple steps which I will be telling you to draw. So let's understand the lateral view of brain. First go for the stomach as I've told you earlier. Go for the stem. Now this becomes your spinal cord. Spot here extended. Draw a leaf like structure if you remember last time. Now this is cerebellum. We are not showing the internal part of the cerebellum, so you can draw simple structures like this. It is just a bifurcation of cerebellum. If you want, you can have some curls if it is required. Now this part is cerebellum. When you talk about cerebellum, the main function of cerebellum is maintaining equilibrium. After this, go for shape. Now coming to this shape, this is very important shape. When you are going, go for a freehand drawing. No, Go in a different way, make it a simple like this. It's so easy to draw. Now, when you have done this, this is nothing but the cerebrum, the largest portion of the brain. And now it is one of the most important part of the brain because it controls all our voluntary activities. Now, when you make this, these are all the folds that you have seen. If you remember, I have told you that brains have number of sulcis and gyris. Now as simple as drawing that bird if you remember like this make a flying bird with some fold if you can put it in a different way the curls are important now these are what sulcis and gyris Sul number of sulci and gyri will decide whether the person is intelligent or not the size of the brain will never decide the intelligence it is the number of folds number of sulci number of gyri will decide whether the person is intelligent or not now this is lateral view of the brain. Now when we go for the sulcus, what is sulcus basically? It's the depressions that is going to divide the brain into different parts. Now we draw one from the first part. So let's take it in this way. This becomes the first one. This is second sulcus which is going to come here. And this becomes the third sulcus. Before that, we need to do the labeling of human brain. Now, let's try and understand. This part, as I told you, it is cerebellum. And cerebellum is responsible for maintaining equilibrium. Equilibrium with respect to walking, with respect to running, with respect to speaking. Even when we speak, there is a coordination between the teeth, the tongue and your jaw. So that is brought about by this cerebellum. This part what you see it is called as pons veroli. Now this pons veroli is basically having the reflex center for breathing. The lowermost part is called as medulla oblongata. Now medulla oblongata is the most important part of the brain. Sudden injury to medulla oblongata can lead to death. Because it controls all the involuntary functions like your digestion, circulation, respiration, sneezing, coughing. All these things are controlled by medulla oblongata. This part which is going to extend is spinal cord. The largest portion that we have made is cerebrum. Now the cerebrum is divided into various lobes. There are different different lobes of the cerebrum. So let's put this as the first lobe called as frontal lobe. Now it is in the front, the forehead that is called as frontal lobe. The part of the brain which is facing the sun is called as parietal lobe. The part which is behind is called as occipital lobe. And the side where our ears are placed, it is called as temporal lobe. Every lobe has a function. But here I am going to put some basic functions. When we talk about frontal lobe, Frontal lobe is simply related to thinking. It's a very simple function that I can give you. Parietal lobe is for motor action. 
whatever action we do while playing cricket it is related to parietal lobe occipital lobe is related to vision we are able to observe anything it is because of occipital lobe the temporal lobe is basically for hearing so these are the very simple simple one one functions that i can give you now coming to the sulcus there are different sulcus as i told you the first the frontal and the parietal lobe they are divided by a sulcus so let's call that sulcus as central sulcus between the parietal lobe and the occipital lobe there is a sulcus so this sulcus is called as parieto occipital sulcus and between the parietal lobe and the temporal lobe there is a sulcus this sulcus we call it as lateral sulcus so this is how you can label all the various parts of the lateral view of the brain that's it for the day thank you very much